Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spare Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna be building ourselves the perfect home lab mini PC server. So let's get started. I do want to thank Geekcom for sponsoring this video and sending over the Geekcom IT11 i7 mini PC, which will actually be replacing the current build I have, which is an Intel Nook i5. Now they are exactly the same size and build, but this is about 25 to 20% faster than the i5 8th generation. It's a pretty huge upgrade for the same form factor, as well as this supports the Intel Iris XE, so I'm actually gonna get better GPU out of this. Now with the new integration of the Proxmox 7.2 and up, you can use your GPU in your VMs now without having to pass through, which means these integrated GPUs now are actually useful. I could use it in a VM to play games or even run Blender. So having a better GPU on one of these mini PCs as well as a better CPU will outperform one of the Intel Nooks by a landslide. As far as the connections on this, you do have the power button, headphone and mic jack, USB 3 in the front and a USB-C also in the front. Onto the back, you have the battle connector, display port, ethernet, two USB 3s, USB-C, and an HDMI. And off to the side, you still have an SD card slot. It's a full SD card slot. If you guys have been following this channel for a while, you probably know that I decommissioned my server, which is the Dell R810, uh, which is a 32 core, 128 gigs of RAM, tons of storage. It's one of those big servers down to a NAS and a Raspberry Pi. What I added to that group recently was an Intel Nook just so I'm able to run VMs and test operating systems out. While the Intel Nook had a 16 gigs RAM and 512 gigabyte storage, it was just enough to run maybe one or two VMs at a time. Then I would have to turn off the other ones. That's due to my RAM limitations. So from the default configurations, which is i7 11th generation, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 512 gigabyte NVMe storage, I'm gonna be adding an extra one terabyte SSD, two and a half inch drive, as well as upgrading the RAM from 16 to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now I opted out from using 64 gigs, even though it does support it, just because the limiting factor of that is the CPU. Once you get to 32 gigs of RAMs of usage, I won't have enough CPU to even support more operating systems anyway. So I feel that 32 gigabytes was a pretty good number to have in this box. Now to upgrade the RAM, it was pretty simple. There's four screws on the bottom that you can remove the bottom plate, which you can also replace for a visa mount. So if you want to mount this to the back of a monitor, after replacing the plate, you can just slide out the old RAM and install the new RAM. On the bottom of the plate is the connector is actually for the 2.5 inch SATA drive. And you do have to remove the rubber grommets to install the drive and you replace them with screws that you get. Once you're done with that, just reverse the process, install everything, and then you would have everything all set up. Now for the benchmarks, I actually got the numbers off the Intel Nook when I first benchmarked this. And then I also did a benchmark on the, the new Geekcom IT11. And I also have this in the benchmarks as well, which is the Mini Forums UM700. Now you might be surprised that I am not using the UM700 for a mini PC server, even though it has a Ryzen 7 3750H in here with eight cores, not just four cores and eight threads. And you'll see why in this benchmark. Now this is running Cinebench and you can clearly see that the i7 is about 20 to 25% faster than the Intel Nook and also 30% almost faster than the mini forms. That alone will prove that this is gonna be an awesome home lab server. Now, I did also test the power outputs because you guys always ask. So it runs around 10 watts when idle. And then when I was running the benchmark with Forza 5, that means using the GPU and the CPU, full maximum everything. It runs about 50 watts to 60 watts, right around that area. I didn't see it go past 60, but so it's right around 55, 50, right around that area. Just for normal usage, running two VMs on this, I get around 40 watts or so, dips up and down from 40. So power usage is phenomenal on this for the power that you're getting. Now to jump into the desktop. All right, so the way I currently have it set up is that I have Proxmox installed, uh, obviously with the upgrade RAM and everything, but if you do want to know how to get rid of this no valid subscription, uh, I, my buddy did make a video on how to remove that and also get the new updates uh, for the no PVE subscription. So I'll leave a link down in the description below for that video as well. He also has a really good video on setting up Proxmox for our mini PC. I'll, I'll leave everything down in the description below. Here we have our mini PC. I have it set up so I only have two VMs running right now, but as you can see, it's barely running next to nothing. One of them is actually in suspend mode and the other one is just running in the background. I'm using about 17 gigs of RAM and keep in mind that the operating system itself runs about 1.5 to 2 gigs of RAM 
just on the operating system alone, which is Proxmox. As you can see, it's uh, eight CPUs, but technically it's four cores and four threads, 11th gen core i7 1195G7 at 2.9 gigahertz. Um, I also have upgraded this with the one terabyte and I, you can see that I actually didn't merge them together as LVM. I like to separate the partitions myself. Uh, the local is what they generate for the operating system and 100 gigs for like ISO storage. You can install VMs on this one drive, but I don't usually. Then it partitions the rest of the remaining storage. So if you have a 500 gig uh, SSD, which that's what we have or the NVMe, uh, it partitions it off to 375 because 100 of it went to the first drive. And technically this is normally used for your VM and everything else. And then my third um, drive is my SSD, which is the one terabyte. Now, the way I have it set up or the way I like it to set it up is, say I have um, my Pop! OS. In here, I have my drives. One drive would be the main operating system. So I'll give you like 64 gigs or 32, whatever the operating system needs. But I also attach a different storage from my SSD, giving it whatever drive I need. Now, if I decide to blow up the system and remove Pop! OS, I still have the 100 gigabyte storage and that's why I usually do it like this. And I can mount that 100 gigabyte storage to say another operating system to pull data off or whatever else. And I, the storage itself doesn't need to be fast. Like I'm installing some games or testing some applications. Uh, it could just go straight into the 100 gig SSD and it will run perfectly fine. But the operating system is running on NVMe, which I will get full speed out of. So that's how I usually like to set things up. Obviously running the operating system off this is actually really really good uh, it does play games too like you could pass through not the graphic card but now the new proxmox you could pass through the gpu so if i was to run some games like locally uh rebel galaxy outlaw or something like that uh hit play it will run the game at whatever speed my gpu is and because this is an intel iris xe the graphic card is actually not bad at all like this game just showing you guys uh which is rebel galaxy on OpenGL. i could push this up to 58 frames 60 frames per second and this is just a uh, intro now it doesn't look fast here because obviously you're streaming through a vnc but if you look at the top left it is doing like 45 frames just for the intro so this cpu is absolutely great for this type of application especially for a home lab yeah, definitely worth it. So overall, this is an amazing upgrade for my home labs. Instead of running a huge server, these things could take care of whatever you need. On this setup with 32 gigs of RAM, I believe I could at least have maybe five VMs running continuously in a bunch of containers. So 32 gigs of RAM is more than enough for what I need, especially for testing VMs for this channel and a bunch of other stuff. So I find this build to be almost perfect for every need that I need, including the fact that I don't have to run a 500 watt server, which is the Dell R810. As far as noise goes, this does go into my little 10 inch rack. So I don't normally hear it at all, but it is extremely quiet. Unless you're running full benchmark and everything, then you will start hearing a fan. But otherwise it is extremely quiet. Keep in mind, uh, I didn't purchase this unit. They did send it over to me, but I do have the price point, which is actually almost similar to what you would pay for an Intel Nook, uh, the i5 8th generation. So you're actually pretty much deciding between if you want an older version of this, which is about $500, or 579, which is the i7 11th generation. So I think it's a really good price point for this type of upgrade. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, you can leave it down in the comments below, or you can join my Discord. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.